spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen. So glad that you decided to turn the dial and be with us this evening. So may the God of Israel who created you and made you bless you from your beautiful head that crowned before you came into this world to your beautiful feet. I pray that Father just, just hug you while you listen to us tonight. And I hope that you are in a, a, a a kind of powerful, if you're peaceful and joyful, then sometimes praise come up from your mouth or, or a prayer will come up of joy and peace or just saying, you know, Father, thank you for my family. Like I'm saying, Father, thank you for the audience. You all have been so beautiful and so supportive over the years. And all those times that you all have stopped me in the street, Hallelujah, and let me know you watched the program. It was what I saw in your eyes and in your face that blessed me and encouraged me to keep on going. And so sometimes I walk away from you and I said, Father, just keep blessing them. They don't know what encouragement that was for them to take time. And sometimes wait if I'm busy doing something, buying something. You'll stand there and wait. And then you'll say, aren't you on, uh, on television? And I just want you to know I never take it lightly. And Father, know who you are. And so prayer, we talk to each other all the time. Well, I, I just thought about it. Well, some of us may be on an island and we don't want to see anybody all day long. But we talk. And if, if you are born again, and if you're not born again, you have uttered a prayer because if something happened in your life, somebody, you just holler, oh, Lord, have mercy. And you might not even know Jesus. Are you sure? So prayer is so important. And I'll start with a, a story because I want to share with you. Uh, Father gave me a, a, a strong desire to create prayer shawls. And it's a gift that I didn't know that I would be able to even make a prayer shawl. I fell so in love with him that what he, what he did was begin to show me uh, the colors of the temple. And as he showed me the colors of the temple, he said to me, um, our congregation is home of prayer congregation, so you know. If you throw me anywhere, the Holy Spirit will pray, pray through me. I, I, I mean, I, I pray, I guess, better than, well, I can't say better than I could teach because the Holy Spirit does the teaching. But he, the place we have is called home of prayer. So I said to Father, people don't usually show up when it's prayer. But he said prayer is what changes things. And so as I studied about the temple, and I saw the colors. And as I, as I continued to read the colors and meditate on the priest, because I, I hang out with the priesthood a lot. Because I used to hang out with Moses, and I still do a lot. So in hanging out and studying about the priest and looking to see the colors that Father was putting in the temple, I think I'm trying to find, well, I think it's Exodus 38. Uh, and we'll get to the prayer shawl in a minute. I just want to get to some place where the colors are. Uh, so just bear with me. If it's not 38, it may be 39. Okay, in 39, where they made the holy garments are made, and Moses uh, views and approves all the work. And I'm going to read verse 1. 
And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as Yahuwah commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And they did, well, I don't need to read that. And so you have to bear with me, with, bear, um, just bear witness with me and, and have patience uh, with me because it was so many things that went on before the prayer shawls began to emerge. And that was the studying of the priesthood and the commandments and the laws and looking at Messiah in the New Testament and looking at that woman with the issue of blood and, and seeing how she reached for this, this garment. And the garment would keep coming up in the Old Testament. It, he, uh, Father told Moses to tell the people, make a, 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 a four-cornered garment and put a, a, a border of blue around it. In another place, he said, make it and put tassels on it. And so when you're reading the scripture and you're reading what is saying there, then you look for who is and who is have prayer shawls, not prayer shawls so much as garments, because I couldn't figure out what kind of garment Messiah was wearing. And, and what did that woman reach for? What was he actually wearing all the way back then? All the prayer shawls that we see today, what they wore back in Moses' time, I don't know. I just know what I have, what I see serves a great purpose. In the, uh, 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 the Hebrew part of it or the Jewish part of it, when a woman is on her menses, she's not supposed to be touching the man. And, and, and they used to way back yonder, you would have to, leave the place during your monthly, you, you couldn't uh, sit around on certain things. So when you come up to New Testament and you see this woman is reaching for this garment and uh, you don't understand at that point that it is a, a prayer garment because we don't know whether, I don't know whether they look like what I have. I know that I will use what I need to use to symbolize what is in the scripture that was of great importance. And when I, I, I saw that this woman was reaching, I never knew what this woman was reaching for before I got the knowledge and the understanding. I just knew that she was reaching. And so as Father uh, revealed that the tassels on the prayer shawl when she reached, she was reaching and touching this as a reminder of Father's name and the commandments. So this means, well, in this day and age, you know, everybody's not keeping the commandments, but they're wearing their prayer, prayer shawls. But this represents his name. And there are so many knots and things you put on here, and it ends up 600 and and 13, represented 613. However, there are five books of Moses. So they, to me, there's no end to commands that Father gives, but his name. So do you have his name? And so uh, when you're doing this, is yod hey wav hey, and somebody say Y-H-W-H, and the others say Y-H-V-H. Y-H-W-H is Yahweh or Yahuwah or a number of ways they said with the Y-H-W-H. Some of them say with the Y-H-V-H and uh, they, uh, well, y'all by, or they just say y'all. Yeah. What does this have to do with the prayer shawl? Well, the priest was, was uh, always uh, there to intercede. In the New Testament, I'm trying to say this so that you can follow how I arrived at making these prayer shawls. When I understood that the Levitical priesthood was set aside to do the ministering to Father's people, and then Messiah came, 
and he was not even part of the Levitical priesthood, but he sprang from the tribe of Judah altogether. This is going to make sense in a minute. And so I had to go through all these studies to understand, really understand the difference. And when I first got a prayer shawl, from seeing the other people with their prayer shawls, it was just one of the most beautiful experiences because when I would pray before I had my first prayer shawl, I would just, I would uh, cover my hair or I would just put my head, you know how you have your cover on your bed and you just hoop it there and then do it like that? I was always doing that. And then I would hear people talk about the prayer closet. You need to go into your prayer closet. I couldn't understand until they said, you know, the prayer shawl represents a prayer closet. And so my first prayer shawl was, it was just holy, just so holy for me. And while I'm using the prayer shawls, the Father began to show me um, some, uh, some of the teachings uh, they had found upon some of the women with the prayer shawls. And I couldn't figure that one out, so then I had to be kind of careful. And in all of this studying, the priesthood, the colors in the temple, the Levitical priesthood, Melchizedek, then the Father said, I want you to make a prayer shawl. I want you to make prayer shawls. Well, if you're like me, I'm going, I don't know how to make prayer shawls. So, but he told me what to do. And then he showed me how to do this. And so I kept looking. I praise Father. I cannot tell you all that. Father just put it in my spirit, wrap this, wrap that. I went run, running to the internet and I said, Holy Spirit, show me where you want me to go and what you want me to do. And so when he did and I started uh, making them, as you will see, there's the blue representing the border. This is the purple. This is the red. And on this one, I put silver, but this is basically, uh, this is 100% cotton. So I left the, um, the gold and everything was off. I just started putting that on and because the gold and silver is also in there. And so I started creating uh, these. And uh, when I end my creation of it, so far, no one else has been allowed to help me to create my prayer shawls. I, I have a DVD with a whole Bible on it. And so what I do when I'm getting ready to create the prayer shawls is I put the word of our God on and so that it is running, is running all while I am creating these prayer shawls. And I pray over the prayer shawls so that anybody, you know, is blessed to, to be given one, then uh, they know that it, it, it's a difference because I don't take it lightly because I've been asking Father, if I ever want to do something with it, you know, I have to pray for somebody to come that likes to pray like I do so that it would be anointed. And so Father told me that these prayer shawls represent the, uh, the end time uh, Ministry, whatever that, listen, you all, I, I'm, I'm just telling you what I hear from Father, and I'm saying, okay, end time ministry, I see end time ministries everywhere. I didn't talk like that to Father. But he said, I want you to look for the ministries that have these colors. Well, you know, Israel got the colors, and other people have the colors. And, and but what's missing is I, I, I'm looking for the, the people that have the purple in it. I mean, more people than our Jewish people. I praise Father for our Jewish people. I need to say this right now and pause uh, because this is all wrapped up in prayer shawls and, and um, doing the Sabbath uh, greetings when uh, Sabbath is coming on. I used to do it a lot. And now it's like the more you, you learn from Father, some things will kind of slip away from you. But they are still good things because I hear people say about people like me uh, that you are trying to be Jewish and run around doing Jewish things. For me, 
that Father, allow me to use anything that will help and increase my faith. And these prayer shawls here are anointed, I'm telling you. I had a, 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 a sister that had to go to court, and what she did is, I think she had is about three or four of them, and they went to court. Uh, this woman had had a case hanging over her head for a long time. And she went to court that day. Well, anyway, she's free. Let's put it that way. And uh, they tell me what happened when they go somewhere with these prayer shawls. The woman with the issue of blood was touching the hem of the garment of Messiah. Like I said, I don't know whether it was a prayer shawl, but I know it had something that would identify who the person is. I don't take my assignment lightly. And now the Father allowed me to expand, and this I tried to do a, a prayer shawl with the colors of the Panthers. And when the Father gave me that idea, and I did one with something else, I said, well, that's not, I mean, what, what is that about? Well, I talked to Father like this, and he said, he said, if they get one of these, they will really pray for their team. So they'll be praying. But that's Father and I talking back and forth, and I ask him a lot of questions. And so you, you get the prayer, and then I got books, and I have Jewish books with all kinds of prayers in it, and, you know, prayer for healing, and just you name it. There's all kinds of prayer for you to succeed in your business. So I'm just surrounded with prayer, and I, I hope that, um, that what I'm saying to you is blessing you because I enjoy working for Father with things I know will make a difference. It has not been a guarantee that every prayer shawl that you put over somebody is going to bring them back. That's why I was so sure that Father was going to bring my husband back, but he didn't. I made a huge prayer shawl, and this is just one aspect of the gifts that Father has uh, given me to do. And let me go back to this scripture here. I don't know whether you have a sickness in your body. I don't know whether you are dealing with something. I do know that when I put the prayer shawl over my head, something is always happening. Every Sabbath before uh, sunset, I'm at my door with the shawl over my head, with the shofar in my hand, to bless, to bless our Father for, um, for giving me this awesome gift. So, do you have anything going on in your body, in your, in your, in your kidneys? Anything going on? Are your kidneys functioning all right? In, in, um, I, do, I do ask Father to bless your kidneys inside your body so that you'll be able to go to the bathroom more and you need to, whoever you are, you need to drink more water, 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 water. Uh, you're going to have to limit your, uh, your, your drinking of sodas. It is the water that flushes out your system and you don't want your, your kidneys there not to be functioning. And so your kidneys have to be exercised. That's what I get. You have to be exercised. So if you're not drinking water and you're just pouring other stuff in there, Something may happen with those kidneys. We pray it does not. But so I pray that Father will bless you to have just, just nice, beautiful, uh, fresh-looking kidneys. Hallelujah. And that they function and pumping and doing what they need to do and filtering the water out and all that wonderful, wonderful things. But anyway, I think that's about all I can say about uh, this, uh, these uh, prayer shawls and the importance and significance of anything that Father anoints and give you to do. Hallelujah. And to give you the gift to do it. Messiah was, uh, we will say, okay, Messiah was representing the God of Israel. Representing his commandments. Representing who he is. And if you just say it another way, Messiah was 
Father, no matter what you look, no matter what we look like, look at John 17 says, the Son is in the Father, and you are in the Son, and the Son is in you. I am in the Son, you are in the Son, and the Son is in the Father. So we are in here together. So the Holy Spirit prays for us because we don't know how to pray for ourselves, it's said in there. We, so he gave, some of us have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we speak in tongues. Some of us do not speak in tongues. We still have the Holy Spirit if we are saved. And so I don't know what else to say. Prayer shawls are important, whether, whether they are the kind I created or the kind our Jewish people created. It, 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 they, they, they work. 